today we're uh, putting the thermal wrap on the uh, the back of the tire wall. So as you can see here, the thermal wrap is a uh, is a layer of two inch rigid foam insulation. Um, the actual plans call for uh, two layers of that to make four inches. Um, I'm saving a little money, so I'm only putting one in, one layer. When I get up to the top near the uh, roof of the house, I'm going to put two uh, for the top layer because uh, I want to double protect against that. Uh, uh, the frost line, which comes down, uh, I believe, 18 or 20 inches from the surface. Uh, so you can see we also have a uh, six mil piece of plastic uh, sheeting down here. That is a vapor barrier uh, to keep moisture from coming up out of the earth into our uh, thermal wrap barrier here. Um, this is this area between thermal wrap and the tire wall, which is going to rise up, is uh, gets filled with dirt. Uh, it's four feet from the outside of the tire wall where the where the thermal wrap starts. And um, that gets filled with dirt and it becomes like a, just a big thermal mass. A thermal wrap helps protect from temperature fluctuations from outside of the wrap um, in the earth. Uh, it helps keep the temperature in the airship uh, more steady. Uh, so let's walk around here. You'll be able to see uh, the cooling tube that we have coming out of the back of the earth. So you get out of there, come on. So we have uh, our cooling tubes. We have two of these trenches dug, and we got 40 feet of uh, 10 inch diameter uh, galvanized culvert uh, coming from inside the house. This is the interior of the house on the, this side of the tire wall. And they come through, break through our thermal wrap right here. As you can see, we've just, we've just went around the culvert here. They go all the way to the back, and that's gonna be dug out. Um, and that end is going to be screened to protect against like rodents and other insects coming in. And then that, this is going to allow air to flow from the outside, from the back of the berm, come through the culvert and cool down as it travels in the culvert underneath the ground, and then come out into the house like air conditioned. And we have, uh, we have natural convection currents from the greenhouse that are that's going to pull air in through these tubes. Um, one other little detail I want to show. Normally you have a, uh, a, a coupling, a culvert coupling that costs uh, $70 per, uh, per coupling you need to do. I didn't go for that. That coupling is good when you need to make it watertight um, or you need a really strong connection. You can put a gasket in there and make it watertight. I just used a piece of six inch flashing around with self-tapping screws to make the connection. All this needs to do is keep the dirt out. There's no, there's no, and once all that dirt's in there, it's gonna hold it nice and tight and steady. So that should work out just fine. Um, yeah, so next step is to, is to backfill behind the thermal wrap, fill up in between the tire wall and the thermal wrap as we go up with our course of tires, and uh, we pound in more tires today as we uh, backfill when the excavator gets here. We're nearing the end of the day, and we've had the excavator come and do a lot of backfill. You can see that there has been fill behind the top, between the tires, and the thermal wrap and it's, we've had fill all between the, uh, the excavation wall and the uh, thermal wrap as well. Um, this is going to set us up in a good place to continue our, our courses of tires like in the back our fourth course um, around those cooling tubes. It'll give us a nice uh, backfill to to get those uh, tires pounded on and uh, we'll also continue that thermal wrap up another level as the tire core as the uh, tire wall uh, increases in courses as it gets higher.